Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 140. I'm one of your hosts, Ace Harris, here with the flyest lady in the room, Mia Ace Driffin. Is, Ace is so funny. <laughs> Ace is so funny. I told you, man, after being married almost 14 years, I have a, uh, I, I am privy to like notice women's fashion and, uh, you know, it's cool. You, but that's appreciated. Yeah, you know sure, what I'm saying? Sure, like yeah. uh, the same way, because I, I'm I, I feel like I pay attention to like I don't know the I've been on style TikTok a lot, and you know okay. what I'm saying. So I feel I, I see certain things, people thrift stuff, and it's like you gotta let people know when they look good. Oh so yeah, the same yeah. way how we give it to guys, guys can give it. Yeah, to, yeah. It's to lift, girls and all, lift and all up all our brothers and, and sisters. You know what I'm saying? You know, but don't, don't let it go to your head because gotta stay humble. You know what I'm saying? That's, Speaking <laughs> of which, um, um, yeah, yeah, that kind of plays into even our conversation today. We're just yeah. talking about. Um, humility and just like faithfulness right. and um trusting god's timing which i feel like is a is a real good like i don't know i feel like sometimes those things coincide with sure. one another um have you had any experience with like realizing what humility is because i feel like even also i was going to say pride too because i feel like you really don't get a chance to really fully understand what right. humility is until you see like the depths of what pride is. Pride so has is, right. that ever like played a part into any part of your, your life or things like that? Yeah. I mean, I, th- I think about, um, my like younger years coming up as a producer. Um, mm. I remember <laughs> I had this, I used to call myself, <laughs> this is, this is in college okay. when I was, this is like before I was really walking with the Lord and I was pursuing music as a producer. And I had this definitive view on how my life would turn out. Mm. And so I would profess Yo, call me Ace the Great. <laughs> I was like, and that was like my moniker. Okay. Um, and I, I would project that, and people would like be excited to join in and calling me that. Okay. Uh, he was like, what kind <laughs> you of? No, I'm, I'm just cu- I'm curious to hear when you s- decided not to go by Ace the Great anymore. Like, what I mean, made you not want to? I think go by that. I think it was like, uh, yeah, it used to be like Ace. I think it was just a. Uh, it was like a. I don't know where that came from. Maybe I think the culture of hip hop and the culture of of music that I wanted to be a part of, it kind of led me to kind of have that arrogance. Mm. Um, and a lot of it was like manifestative type of energy. Like yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to be great, okay. which I think there is beauty in pursuing greatness. Mm. But I think I wanted to be great for my own name, literally for my own name's sake, Real. Yeah. which I feel like is, is problematic as a Christian. <laughs> you know what Very. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, so, so I was prideful uh, even before I had quote unquote, the receipts to like really, um, you know, shore up my quote unquote greatness. I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'm great. I'm ace to great. I'm this producer. Mm-hmm. It's confidence, which I think is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but it, it, I, I felt like um, in that moment, I was not humble. Oh, I, I, I think I looked at humility as a weakness. Mm. Like it would be us. It would be like a stumbling block to my, my ability to kind of behold like the music business. It was like, that's lame, bro. Being humble. Like you got to walk in the room and talk your talk. Yeah. Which I, again... On the on the surface, I think there's times when you gotta like let people know what you what you do. Right. But the question is, is that the energy that you want to portray? If you're really that dope, you ain't really gotta talk about it anyway. You know what I'm saying? It'll just kind of ooze out of you. That's, I, that's my thought. I've, I've always felt like that when it comes to uh, pride and confidence. Right. Because people will always say they're the same thing, and they're so not the same thing. So I not feel the like same thing. When it comes to pride or arrogance you constantly have to tell everyone how great you are oh yeah because you know i did this and like you know oh, people always right, have right. to say it for themselves but i feel like with confidence other people say that about you and you just receive it for what it is you know what i'm saying I feel like it's like you embodied it in a sense i don't know i feel like sometimes in culture today they confuse the two they definitely and it's, do and it's like it's it's no it's nowhere near why do you why, why, why do you think people confuse like like confidence and like pride like what's 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 the clear difference? Like, let's talk about pride. Like, what is okay. what is what would you feel like for you? What does that like feel like? You know what I'm saying? For pride, I feel like pride definitely comes from you thinking. I don't. I don't know. I'm not sure if it's even maybe some things from like, uh, like with social media and the things like we're exposed to, or maybe even like self love. Because sure. sometimes people think that like with you, of course, loving yourself, expressing that. Sometimes people go to the extremes. <laughs> yeah. They go to like I gotta these, take care of myself. You know what I'm saying? Self, but like, self, but, self. but there's nothing wrong with expressing no, how sure. great you are. It's just the fact that sometimes we tend to kind of go a little overboard yeah. in that expression. Yeah. Um, so therefore, it seems as if we're on this super high horse. We're untouchable. I think another thing is is yeah. when you think when you think 
high of yourself but then low of others and that's oh, kind of like you know what i'm saying and it's like it's nothing wrong with thinking high of yourself so, like, or like or thinking good things of yourself but when you have to put other people down or view your perspective of others is lower and you're up here and they're down here that's when it gets real toxic that's and that's so it, it's, it's not attractive that's so good like so what you're saying is like pride is more about how you see yourself yeah in relation to other people yeah which that's kind of what arrogance arrogance definitely leads you there right it's like yo i got this they ain't got that yeah i'm on this y'all not it's always mm -hmm. comparing comparing what you have or what you're doing mm -hmm. in contrast to someone else isn't and i think that's it's just problematic yeah. like now i want to ask you this because you said something about um of course with being a producer yeah. and hip-hop and things like For that sure. and i think i think i heard shout out to aaron cole i remember there was a time when he was really diving into like humility and like things like that because it's kind of hard sometimes when you're in a space like hip hop. Right. You know what I'm saying? Cause like hip hop, you know, you get on the mic and you talk, you know, you, you talk your stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you're, you're, you're very confident and express that. Um, even like, you know, I guess in today's times, like, you know, we all know about like the diss records and things like that oh, yeah, happening yeah, yeah, now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Things so like I, that. I feel you. Everybody's kind of like claiming their territory. Yeah. You know how, how has it been like seeing that maybe even in a, in a mainstream space yeah. and then even also maybe even in a CHH space yeah. like how do people like that tension of like you know hip hop has a, as a very like you know a confident a confident genre yeah, you know what it, I'm saying yeah, like it's a confident it's sport not, it's not you jazz. can't go you can't go <laughs> right you can't go in it like you know really feeling low but yet you have to be humble like talk about that tension between like you know humility pride hip hop and things like that's that that's a great question cuz hip hop the form the the actual genre of hip hop to express yourself artistically in that form, it, it requires you to um, assert yourself. Right. Yeah, yeah. Speak with confidence. Mm -hmm. Speak with boldness. So when you talk about Christian hip-hop, um, that's why I think a lot of people initially in the origins of Christian hip-hop struggle with what that even sounds like because they view hip-hop as a very boastful, self-serving, self-, right. uh, yeah. serving, self um, like, you know, yeah, self, um, like pointing at yourself type of genre in a way that how could God be glorified in that? Mm -hmm. However, I think there is room, obviously, to do it. Because like when you look at hip hop in general, it's a competitive sport. Mm -hmm. It's um, sometimes it's like a, a locker room type of energy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just like, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to be the best. When you go back to rap battles and all those mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. which I think it's fine. But if we're going to come for hip hop for being that, we got to come for the SEC. We got to come for football. Mm. We got to come for college football. Right, we got to come, yeah. and I, I know the Christians don't want to hear that because they they, they don't want their sports. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want to say, yeah. "Hey, I want to poop on Christian hip hop," mm -hmm. but I want to keep my 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 college um Saturday game day mm -hmm. competitive energy. Yeah. So it's like, eh, let's 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 keep it one hundred and everything. Everything we do has moments of like confidence in it that we have to just like watch it. But I feel like, um, honestly, I've had to and have to currently. Me, I have to. Um, monitor some of the lyrics at times that come out of each records. For real? Um, when I say monitor, I have to just get perspective yeah. because hip hop is a very like it's a competitive, it's a very assertive genre, mm -hmm. and I just and and it's easy to get caught up in that and like kind of tread the line of boasting. Got you. Pointing at yourself, mm -hmm. I'm this, I'm doing that, and then you caption it with "Look at God." <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. So I, trying to keep it balanced. Trying basically. to keep it balanced. Yeah, you, you, you try to redeem the boastfulness by saying, look at God did. Yeah. Where it's like, I almost feel like when people say that, you're trying to re you're trying to like sanitize mm. arrogance by saying, mm. look at God. But really what you're really what I hear sometimes is look at you. It's like I see, okay, I see. No, no, you, no. You're I hear saying you. look what God did, but you're really it's, it feels like look what I did yeah. at times. Yeah. So I, we have to just, we have to be careful. Mm -hmm. But I feel like uh, there's been times where I've had to just challenge, like, hey, um, how can we say that better? How can we um be confident in what the things that the gifting that you do have, how can you relay that bar? Yeah. But also, said artists, how can God get the glory out of that yeah. over yourself? You that's know? good, yeah. Yo. You know? And that that's why I think yeah. humility has to always fight to show itself um, in the front and not mm -hmm. let pride kind of mm -hmm. just um, hold us down. You know what I mean? Can we talk about the <laughs> humble brag ah. that people do? Or like, or like it, it's, yeah. it's either the humble brag or, and we see this a lot. Um, mm. <laughs> I don't mean to knock talk nobody who says Go ahead, go ahead. But you know how they'll be like, hey man, like, you know, like, yo, the song just went crazy. Like, you know, like shout out, like, you know, the song, like, oh, you going viral, like getting all this stuff. Like, man, praise God. <laughs> 
Praise God. You know what why I'm saying? You, and it's like, why you sound so church right because now? Because that's how they be saying it. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I nothing, again, I hear my heart, nothing wrong with things like that. It's just, there are some times when it's, I don't know. I feel like sometimes people don't, sometimes Christians, this is my personal opinion, don't, aren't able to receive a compliment. They're coming for you, Mia. They you know, I, I mean, sometimes they can't, though. That's just me personally. Oh. I feel like sometimes they can't receive a uh, a compliment or like you know yeah yo like good job on this or this that and the third or like you know you look great doing this whatever sure. and it's they they instantly just say like you know praise god or all that out of routine like you know what i'm saying oh. and i feel like sometimes it's a and I, I don't know if sometimes we're maybe in our head where we want to express people oh well god gets all of it where i feel like god it, it, you know you you know what i'm saying or even in the sense of where yeah <sighs> I think even even in a sense of where it's like you God God knows you mm-hmm. or like knows your heart. And I hate always saying that, but I I, I know that that's always true. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we maybe we sometimes we try to express it for to people just to prove that like, oh yo, like you know, I'm not I'm not prideful and things like that, which I mean it's good to, I guess to do stuff like that. But yeah, um sometimes I feel like it's okay for you to be able to God is your boast, you know what I'm saying? And sure. like you're built to brag if you're built to brag on him, him, you know? So um That's good. I, I just I don't know. Does that make sense of what no, I'm saying? I, 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 do you do you feel like you see that a lot, specifically in like Christian culture, like yes. the hum- like the hum- and I wonder I think I don't know, do you feel like its origin is like meaning well. I, we want to make sure we're not. I, I think. I think absorbing pe- the praise. We want to make sure we're people pointing. mean well. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just that. Um, I just get curious if sometimes if they're just saying that if people just say that like out of routine. You know what I'm saying? Or just saying it because Ooh, that's what we should. I got We should do. I, I got th- I think. I think that in church culture, um, a lot of times that's a reflex. Partly because, and this this is something I even look. We all go through this. We're almost conditioned in America and Christianity to perform our righteousness. We want to being humble is um, expressing humility. Yes. Being, being righteous is expressing righteousness, talking it, projecting it. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if Mia, like what if (laughs) humility should flow out of you? You shouldn't have to always say it. You shouldn't have to always talk. That's what I'm saying. Like if, if you, if you are humble, you don't have to perform your humility in, saying praise God mm-hmm. for to get so you can make sure people look at you that way. Yeah. I wonder if in that comment we're still kind of like p- pointing to ourselves because yeah. it's almost like, yo, yeah, praise God, praise God, praise God. But it's almost like it's you're doing it so that you can almost project to the other person how humble you want to be perceived. You know I'm what I'm so saying? grateful for you because so like, here it is. You <laughs> communicated that so beautifully and that's literally, that, that's exactly, yes, yeah. yes. And I, 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 I do feel like I mean, I have to watch, like, I mean, it's great to say that and it's, it's, it has to be pure, but I also feel like you can just sometimes be like, thank you. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with you saying thank you. Can you can just be like, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank God. And, I mean, yeah. So we have to just be careful. It's like yeah. humility and pride are obviously uh, tensions that mm-hmm. we all struggle with or try to walk through on one end. Um, we're supposed to be humble. You don't want to be out here just getting all, getting all the glory, getting yeah. all the praise. In the hip hop sense, you don't want to be out here <laughs> rapping bars about, look at this, I'm killing them. Shout yeah. out God, quote. Yeah. And, like, and then on one hand, you don't, on one end, you don't want to prof- profess humility um, from a place of being concerned about how you're being perceived. Mm-hmm. Like you're, you're, you, you want to be perceived as humble. So you say things like, praise God. Oh, it's all God. It's not yeah. me. Yeah. When you still look kind of self-righteous. Yo. And that's, that's, and this is, the, I feel like people are going to be offended by that, but I think it needs to be said. Like, I mean, yeah. It needs to be said. Like, being humble don't mean professing humility. Being humble isn't what you say. It's a heart posture. It's a heart posture. And if your heart is there, it will come out. Will you come know what out. I'm saying? Yeah. Like, um, what what is the scripture where uh, the abundance of the mouth, the heart speaks? Sure, You know sure. what I'm saying? So it's like, if, yeah. if you're really humble in your heart, sure. you know, it's going to come out. For you know sure. what I'm saying? Or you can still say thank you or like, you know, and things like that. But in the way you walk, you talk, you live, that's where true humility yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's kind of like th- thinking about like David in the Bible when, uh, you know, the, the youngest of the brothers was out in the field, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he was called up mm-hmm. and he, you know, he was after God's heart and obviously he made some mistakes here and there, but he's always... With all his glory, I think about it, this dude was like, like you know, he would be like a modern day celebrity, yeah. a modern day religious yeah. celebrity, a mm-hmm. king, mm-hmm. Um, a righteous man after God's heart, uh, very sought after, very respected, revered, and 
still he was postured in a way to humble his heart unto the Lord. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a great example for all of us to just think about how this person with, because I think sometimes with glory comes with like w- glory in the world, the, the, the human heart's reflex is pride. Yes. It's like, Oh, they are. They feeling me. Yeah, I'm gonna let y'all know. It. Right, so, right, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we could talk. We could talk about this. I think for 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 a time, and I think it's also good to to know to know about how, um, with that humility, um, that doesn't lead that doesn't that doesn't exempt us from working hard and being mm. faithful. So we we'll talk about that on the next segment. This is the one one six life on Holy Coach Radio, Sirius Channel one four zero. I'm your host Ace Harris here with the amazing Mia Evans. We'll be right back here. Don't go anywhere. Yeah. Welcome, welcome back. This is the one one six life on Holy Coach Radio. Sirius Channel 140, uh, here with the amazing Mia Evans. I'm your host, Ace Harris. And we're just talking about humility, faithfulness, and trusting the Lord. And I think faithfulness is a word people toss around a lot. Um, yeah. I mean, I have my thoughts on what faithfulness means. What is that? Not like a definition, but what do you, what does that mean for you? What, like the word faithfulness, what does that mean for you, Mia? I think faithfulness is just simply you sticking to it. You know what's funny? What's you, I, I never really grasped the thought of, faithfulness as something that we do i don't know why it it like just recently or not long ago i realized that it's not just something that god does but also something that he kind of like commands us to you know what i'm saying so like tenacity sticking uh sticking through things and endurance and different things like that and whatever like you know your tasks and so um i think faithfulness is just sticking to for sure. Regardless of what's going on. Like, I think that he's in place with the first part of the word, faith, faithfulness. You know what I'm saying? So regardless of what things look like, um, you being able to still be committed to whatever God's got you on or like, you know, just whatever you see. Well, how do you how do you perceive faithfulness? Uh, yeah, I feel like to me, faith is like an action word um, and faithfulness is acting that out. Like, um, like being consi- like faithfulness is not it's just, it's just not very it's not a very popular um, sentiment in today's culture. Mm. I think we we celebrate giftedness over mm. faithfulness. Talk about that. Like, what do you mean? We celebrate talent over hard work. We celebrate outcomes mm. okay. over input. Like we celebrate the things that look um good after the after you know the reward or blessing comes. We don't really care how it happened. We just care about the outcome. We just mm. care about the results. Yeah. Um things are just moving so fast in culture. Where we just we just like yo put this equation in and get this output. Yeah. Whereas to me the secret formula really for real for real in any walk of area of life is faithfulness. Yeah. Faithfulness like being like I think people are more interested in what they achieve mm. in contrast to who they become. Like we should we should think of forget about what you accomplished. Forget about that. Forget about Grammys. Forget about awards. Shout out everybody that's nominated for the Stellas this year. Yeah, for sure. Um, we can talk about that a little bit more. But like, who are we becoming? And I think that is like faithfulness. It's just mm-hmm. not, it's not really popular. Me like it's it's so easy to just focus on the outcome. Like, and I feel like that's kind of the culture that we're in. Is just we just want to. Faithfulness is not, it's like, because look at like boring and lame. You know what I'm saying? Mm, yeah. It's like, uh, you been, you, you still doing that you're thing? Still yeah. Because I mean, <laughs> even think about doing... culture, there's yeah. so many things that like culture makes you feel bad on. Like, for sure. People look, like people who look down on marriage. Marriage oh, is a testament to faithfulness. faithfulness. You know what I'm saying? It's like people who say they can never be in a relationship with one person for the rest of their life. But like, that's a, a testament oh, to faithfulness. You um, working hard at that same job for, 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 for you know, years while everyone's kind of jumping around trying to do the whole, you know, insta famous thing. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, well, you got a exactly. great paying job where it teaches you, um, you know, discipline, where it teaches you hard work. You know, there's nothing wrong with staying faithful to that one job. It's it, it's crazy how like little things like that will in culture counteract what we yeah know, it's, like, it's you know, what we know. And, you know? And I, I, I want people to hear you clearly. You're not saying stagnation, like you're no, not saying no, no. yeah, like running in circles. No, 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 no. Faithfulness is actually like it's momentous. It has momentum. It's like yeah. you're building towards something. Like think about Noah and the Ark. Think about um, so many examples. Think about um, uh, even like Jesus' faithfulness to the cross. Think about. Um, Abraham faithfulness like waiting for like yeah. faithfulness is just like working while you wait yeah it's not waiting without working either right and it's not dipping Sheesh. out when the work gets hard yeah, yeah. it's like we are literally in the plow hands like I think about my life a little bit too like I mean I, I turned 40 in a couple couple months bah, bah, bah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you <laughs> it's like I, f- I feel like 
a lot of the things that God has allowed me to touch and see has been him moving me towards faithfulness. And in that, he's been faithful. Mm-hmm. Like he's been faithful towards my faithfulness. Because um, because I had to kind of give up a certain thing. I had to surrender certain things that I wanted and just focus more on the process. Just yeah. the daily input mm-hmm. of doing what you're supposed to do. I mean, it just seems so countercultural. Is there, is there a time in your life you could think about where you was trying to be faithful and it's just like, eh, I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> like, <laughs> you was like, this is, this is whack. I ain't doing this no more. Um, I mean, even, I, I can't even speak to just where I am currently. Like, I've just been really focusing on just like health. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And just making sure just I'm just healthy. Just not even just, not weight loss, just making sure that I'm just not eating so much sugar. Sure. Like, you make sure I'm exercising and things sure. like that. And, um, man, I'm not going to lie to you, Ace. I, I got a sweet tooth, man. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? Or like, even like there are days where, my schedule yeah. blocks up and I don't feel like going to the gym. I you know what you. I'm saying? And it's, it's, it's important. I try to exercise that faithfulness. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like even just thinking of the fact that I, I, I know my personal goals even, and I'm thinking about even what you said with how Noah and um, yeah. Abraham and Jesus, how um, they exerted faithfulness and but they it, it was hard for them it was hard it people was laugh, hard people laughed at them mocked them you know what i'm saying and it, it's hard for it, it, it's i think that's kind of where people kind of lose it in faithfulness is the fact that you need like endurance and endurance. you need to be able to and really community st- and, man listen you need people to cheer you on and yeah i i think about um you know it's kind of like with, with faithfulness it's like there's so much that I feel like culture just doesn't want you to to behold because it's not it's just not celebrated. But um, I mean, when you think about all the successful things in this world, like you're not going to change anything in your life without changing something you do daily. It's, mm. it's just it's virtually impossible yeah. to like have these desires you you got your people got their vision boards. <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 irritating somebody. <laughs> Hey, somebody come up with my vision board. You're going to take your vision board off the wall now just because I hate to say Yo, put them vision boards up, y'all. <laughs> put them vision boards up, man. I'm sorry. You got, you got magazines. Right, I know. That's... Magazines. We talking about me, Ace. I made a vision board two yeah, years ago. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Shout out. To... No, you good. You good. You good. You good. I didn't mean to help. No, no, no. You good. No, you good. Board. You good. You good. Take it off. No, <laughs> um, I, yeah, it's great. We dream. We like, you no, know, the dreaming and the planning phase is fun. You get to get together. I'm going to, top of the year, get you mm-hmm. clothes. Everyone's like that. It's so fun. And I'm, I ain't trying to be a vibe kill. No, but no, no, the, no. Like the real uh, spiritual, I think, um, formation of our hearts mm-hmm. is found not in the like, it's part of it. It's found in the vision casting and the dreaming and, mm-hmm. the, and you know, pitting, with up, you know, speaking to what you want to see happen. Mm-hmm. But the real spiritual formation for all of us um, is really found in the faithfulness. It's it's the it's the it's the what time what what kind of time you on in April when you, in light of your January resolution? Right. Yeah. It's, it sounds like almost convicted for me. Like what what, yeah. what you said you was gonna do? What now? were you gonna do? What, what, what's that thing we mm-hmm. was planning for? Yeah. Um, be faithful. You know what right. I'm saying? And if you apply that pressure, and it's not a magic formula, but it is a spiritual formation because again i think if people look at this like yo ace is saying be faithful grind 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 results 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 no i'm saying it'll form your heart Mm -hmm. and spirit to become the way god wants you to come and sometimes when you get your heart there i've seen not for everybody not for every circumstance i've seen god then um respond with his faithfulness right and do the miraculous work that you couldn't that we can't the work doesn't generate anyway Mm -hmm. but it's like your hearts will be formed Mm -hmm. spiritual formation being faithful, who you're becoming. That, I was going to say that that speaks back into the yeah. becoming part. And I yeah. was thinking while you were talking, what is it about culture that they reject faithfulness? Get the so bag. Much? I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I was going, I was thinking in my mind of how we live in like this pop, this uh, microwave culture yeah. where it's like, we don't want to slow cook nothing. We don't, we don't, we don't know that, like, you know, the difference between a meal sure. when it's in the microwave yeah. versus when you put it in the the slow cooker, slow you know, cooker. you let it marinate for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And we want to go to like the next, the next, what's next. So like it, it, the moment, that's what it is. The moment it doesn't work, we're off to the next thing. Dang. And it's like, I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen talented people, people who, um, just have so much going for them and potential, but because they just didn't stick at it, 
they go to the next thing. I remember That's good. Um, meeting someone who was always just changing their career mm. for like they wanted to, they were really great in one area, but then they were like, oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to do real estate and then I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. But those things were, you were able to get, you know, real estate agents, they make a lot of money. You know what I'm mm. saying? But none of that happens. Nothing worth having comes easy. You know what I'm saying? So it's like with nothing, because nothing that's worth having comes easy. You got to put your work into something. For sure. You got to be faithful into something. Nothing, nothing's just going to just come just by happenstance. Nah, you know what I'm saying? Sure. So you have to, oh, you're, you're, you can never avoid faithfulness. No, nah, but, but I'm actually thinking about like, when you said those, that person and that person could be like all of us in a lot of ways. No, right? yeah, yeah. I wonder why do we as people jump ship so quickly do we uh, like almost 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 like in that are we being is God part of our process on what we're doing to, to or, or is it do we really feel like I'm going to get it so yeah. if I don't see it the way I want it to happen I'm going to go to the next thing like right. I wonder if we're taking on responsibilities taking on um work that God is supposed to be doing anyway mm-hmm. and maybe that's why we're jumping ship cuz we're we don't really believe he could do it for us and that's pride <laughs> That's here it is we think <laughs> that we can do it yeah. on ourselves and we don't even include god in on the pl- plan you know what i'm saying and i feel like when you sometimes even like seeing god's faithfulness can even encourage you in your faithfulness you know because knowing sure. that he's gonna he's gonna of course top you you know For what i'm sure. saying absolutely. so you just giving the best that you can yeah he's gonna he's gonna meet you to where you're at absolutely i mean that, that's that's just how i mean i think about so many so many examples um of just like uh that kind of just consistency faithfulness um and then I, I don't think faithfulness means that you don't have moments of doubt no like when you're working and going at it, it it may look like man i don't know when this thing gonna take shape out mm-hmm. and that's i think that's perfectly fine and okay to have doubt why you can have doubt while being faithful yeah it, the, the two don't cancel each other out mm-hmm. in fact i think they're kind of woven together yeah um i think faithfulness embodies doubt but it don't want you. It's not dipping out. You know what I'm saying? It's like you That's have to. That's a bar. You know what I'm saying? Come on. You, know, you can't dip. Like yeah. faithfulness is like, yo, I don't know the next few steps. All I know is this: what's in front of me. I'm in this field today. I'm dropping these seeds mm-hmm. down. I'm, I'm plowing this land. Mia, that's all I got. Yeah. I believe, actually, I want something to happen. I want these crops to be, look, I'm praying for million dollar crops. I'm praying for change in my neighborhood or family members to find the Lord Mm -hmm. or preachers who are like, kind of like, they they probably go through this a lot. I'm praying for this person to come to the Lord, but Mm -hmm. I'm just going to steady just throw these seeds in the ground. I'm just going to, in fact, I don't even know how this is going to happen. Yeah. I don't. In fact, this outcome seems unbelievable. And Lord, I'm trusting you with it. I don't know how you're going to do it, but all in all, with all that doubt, I'm I'm not giving up on what I feel like you're calling me to do. Mm-hmm. I'm staying in it. And I feel like that's where he wants all of us. And that's why I think it's even important to yeah. be able to consult your plans with God. Yeah. Where it says, like, you know, um, commit your ways to the, the Lord, Lord and he'll direct your path. I think he'll direct you, he'll direct your faithfulness. You sure. know what I'm saying? Because imagine if you take God out of your plans and you don't consult him, you don't let him purify your motives and things like that. What if you're steadily running towards something that he don't want you to? So therefore, sure. yeah, you're burnt out. Yeah, you want to jump ship because that's not what he wants you to. You're not able to, your faithfulness isn't there because you didn't even include the faith giver. You know what I'm saying? Like Ooh, I, I just good. feel like that just, that yeah. plays a part. Like consult God into the plans that yeah. you have. So therefore your faithfulness and you're faithful in the right thing. For sure. How many people be like faithful in the thing that that's not really his assignment for, for you? For sure. That's good. I mean, it's like, um, you know, there's so many things that like, in terms of like people, people like how you handle small things, is how you handle big things, yo. It's a fact. You you see somebody how they manage a hundred dollars? That's how they gonna manage a hundred thousand dollars. It's just a, it's this this is it's not stewardship, bro. This, this is a, this is obviously a biblical wow. principle, but this is like a life from different like this is like a secular principle in a, in a way. I mean, it's obviously rooted in the Bible. But I'm saying how you handle uh this is for look how you treat your girlfriends, how you gonna treat your wife? Yes, it's just faithfulness over the little things indicates how you'll be faithful mm. over greater things. Yeah. Um. How you handle, you know, your first customers, how you going to handle the next mm. 2,000. This stuff is really, if we could just get, I'm actually talking to myself. We could just, re- like, remember the simple things in life and be faithful over those little things. Yeah, man. There's so much exponential, um, not even just growth, but exponential learning and wisdom that you can grow into. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. I feel like we just, we are so quick to, like, 
skip those steps, Mia. We yeah. just, we just want yo. How you handle your your um raggedy car? Yeah, bro. It's how you gonna handle your? I'm, I'm realizing that. It's how you gonna handle faithfulness your faithfulness plays a part in stewardship. In all a way. of it, all of it, all of it, all of it. How you steward the little things indicates how you steward the mm-hmm. bigger things. Which I think I've seen people who are just faithful with a little. And I'm telling you, um, I've seen them like really like increase. Um, yeah. Not like in a material sense, mm. but just in like increasing who they're becoming more so. Um, and, and watch how God can do his part and his faithfulness and yeah. bless um, the work of your faithfulness. Mm-hmm. Not because of your actual efforts, but because of your heart mm-hmm. and who you're becoming. So we can probably talk, you know. No, nah, for Because <laughs> you started something up with that. Let me not, let me not yeah. get a, I feel like I'm going like to start preaching. But um, yeah, I think this, but in that, the next phase of our talk, it's like it, it can't start there. It's the trusting part, which mm-hmm. is sometimes in the waiting part. That's, that's, oh that's, my that's gosh, the, that's that's the hardest part. But we'll talk about that in the next segment. This is the one one six life, Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel one four zero. We'll be right back, y'all. Welcome, welcome back, y'all. This is the one one six life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel one four zero. I'm one of your hosts, Ace Harris, here with the amazing Mia Evans, and we just talking about um, first humility, um, faithfulness, and then I think the byproduct. Of, or the response to that is really just trusting, which is sometimes the hardest part, I feel like, yeah. of working on your craft, like your work with the Lord. It's like you got to have a humble heart, yes, but not like a fake humble heart. Mm-hmm. Got to have a faithful um, perspective, which mm-hmm. is just like active. You got to be actively doing the thing that you're supposed to be doing and like doing it daily and not sw- like all over the place switching up, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But then after you got all that right you like God. I got all that. Um, where's the increase, though? <laughs> where is it? At? Yo, where's the where's the where's the results? Where's the harvest? Now you waiting? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. Sometimes we be going to God with our receipts. You know? Man, listen. I did this, 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 and, that. and you're looking like man. You know, listen. What, where I we at? That. Where we at? I mean, do you feel like when? that? Do you feel like that sometimes? Yeah, Ace. <laughs> when when we figured, I, I knew that this was a topic that I just knew I could like for real feel, mm-hmm. just because. Ace, I feel like I've been waiting my whole life. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I remember yeah. there was a time when, but I feel like I've, I've grown with the idea of trust and waiting. Like I remember there was a time when, shout out like Maverick City and like Elevation Worship for creating great soundtracks for Christian culture. I'm not gonna lie to you though. Like you know, wait on you, mm. Grammy Award winning song. Mm. Everyone loves that. I'm mm. gonna wait on you. Mm. I hated that song when I first heard it. <laughs> Yeah, why, and, but, why? but mind you listen I knew it was powerful spoke to me personally tear kind of shit but I hated that song why, why, why did you I hate hated it? it because I'm tired of waiting you know what I'm saying <laughs> yeah. like well, I, I was in a space at the time where I was just like no I don't want to wait on you <laughs> you know what I'm saying I trust your goodness I trust your promise yeah. your faithfulness but I'm so tired of waiting and when I tell you for the longest I would skip that song Ace I, like, I, cause Yo, I was just funny I, but only because I, I wasn't I, I wasn't there and I think that when it comes with with waiting oh man there's yeah. just so many different things that I've learned like um that there's joy in waiting yeah that you have to find the joy in waiting or different ways to the, the I'm not gonna lie the joy will keep you into waiting I'm telling you a dope thing that God showed me yeah. a while ago yeah. um that where it says um uh they that wait on the Lord shall renew in their strength you know what I'm saying and then I'm just like connecting scripture so thinking like okay so the joy of the Lord for sure is my strength so they that wait on the Lord shall renew That's in their strength. strength. They that wait on the Lord shall renew in their joy. Yeah, sure. Like what if like when you, for me, I was, re- I've been trying to find the new, the joys and being grateful in the things that I have when I'm waiting. Mm. Like if I could be very transparent, man, being single, being mm. a single woman, mm. you know what I'm saying? And while everyone's around you is getting married, mm. engaged, things like that. And mm. it's kind of like, well, how do I find joy being here for so long mm. where you get weary you know what i'm saying so mm. it's like even in a sense of where i find the joys in it where i'll never get this season ever again in my life mm. and i can freely do whatever i want mm. i know myself mm. i'm not desperate you know what i'm saying like mm. I'm, I'm, most Preach. people i know that are out here desperate getting whatever i'm not settling for mr right now you know what i'm saying opposed to just w- waiting waiting for the mr right that god has for me you know what That's i'm saying so, good, so waiting i think something that kind of keeps i know for me personally keeps me in waiting is finding the joys in it. There's joy in a waiting season. Yeah. And how you wait, it's, it's like waiting well is a real thing. 
Like mm. how you wait when you are is so key. And I think that's just what's been speaking to me and um, has really helped me. I'm so, I'm, no so, I'm, so, I'm so just hearing you say that is just, you know, I, 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 I just hear your sincerity. I hear your passion. You know what I'm saying? And it almost must moves me to moves me to tears. I mean, I, you know, I feel like specifically what you just spoke about, like singlehood, singleness, mm. um, uh, being a faithful woman of God. You know what I'm saying? Being a black woman. Mm. Uh, I, I got people that I know, family members who mm. are right there with you. Yeah. What 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 do you what can you say to the 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 lady out there, the woman out there, the girl out there that's like sharing in your in your grief? Mm. And also in your joy and like waiting, what 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 could you say to kind of like encourage them? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. One thing that I've realized lately, which is a hard truth, is that sometimes, um, sometimes when it's hard to wait, maybe sometimes we've placed the thing that we're desiring on a pedestal. Maybe we've made it an idol in a sense. And that's what can really... Uh, kind of take you off on the deep end that will make you not be faithful that'll make you mm. be proud and different things mm, like that mm. um examine one let let god examine your heart for sure you know what i'm saying when it comes to that because sometimes we don't realize that the things that we desire going getting promoted getting that house being for in sure. another tax bracket things like that where have we made this have we have we made an idol out of this thing? You know what I'm saying? Where therefore we we let our emotions get the best of us and things sure. like that. So therefore it weighs us, it, it keeps us wavy in the waiting. You know what I'm saying? And the best thing you have to be is just steady. Like, you know, you keeping your eyes on you trying to be married or you trying to uh have be the 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 top of the corporate ladder or what, but you need to keep your eyes on Jesus. You know For what sure. I'm saying? Like, cause that's when you sink. You know, it's like that's what we we realize. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, so that's good. um the way you're able to, and I know this sounds cliche, but we need reminders like that because they're truths and they're facts. You, when you're able to keep your eyes on God, um, God's able to show you. I, I, I personally, just for me, God's been able to show me how I'm able to make it through and how I'm able mm. to stay um, steadfast and faithful, faithful and right. things like that. Humble in seasons like this, in the season of waiting, and um, that's what's going to get you through. It's not going to be easy at not by all means, but um, for sure, knowing that one God is faithful, he rewards faithfulness. And when you wait well, he's not going to leave you by the wayside when you, um, when you wait well and you keep your eyes on him throughout that yeah. time. You don't let it get the best of you, I would say. And I think that's good. I think, first of all, you, that's amazing, um, powerful and amazing and insightful. I think um, there may be someone, I think, well, people who probably hear that sentiment, and they are like in the race, you know what I'm saying? Humble, faithful, trusting, waiting well, joy, yada, yada, yada. And then I wonder if they, like, is it okay or is it not okay to basically de decide how God's going to reward faithfulness? Mm, like, what do you mean by that? Is it, does God, like, can you trust God? for the thing you're wanting, wanting to have, whatever that may be, may be, do we trust his hand more than his heart? Oh, that's so good. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of an example in the Bible that's, that's kind of like, kind of like sobering, but like, you know, Job, you know, God took everything from him. Um, there's been people who probably have family members who have dealing with like, you know, sickness or health or, mm -hmm. There's, 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 certain, there's certain people who didn't actually get what they're waiting for yeah, right. in, this, in this life, in, mm -hmm. on this side of eternity. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if in the joy and the strength and all that, we just, as we're trusting the Lord, we, I just want to caution myself to like make sure I'm trusting his heart more than his hand. Yeah. And that he may not reward you provisionally, but he has rewards for you eternally. Yeah. That it's, it's humbling and sobering it to is. hear somebody be like, Oh, so you mean like God can't, he doesn't have to give me what I want? That's what Christians don't want to hear. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's what they don't want to hear in the pulpit. He can. Yeah. He can, he has. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, but we need to also trust in him and his heart mm -hmm. for us more than his hand and giving us what we, we desire. Yeah. So sometimes it's, it's hard. Not, not, not that you can't believe it. Yeah. I'm just saying like, is that, a, is that, do you feel like that's a healthy view of God or is that limited? What you no, think? it's it's healthy. It's hard to grasp, but it's healthy. <laughs> and I think sometimes we 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 trust 
I think we put a lot of our weight in that God's going to do it Mm -hmm. opposed to like whatever God chooses, whatever the outcome is, is what he wanted for me. And I'm going to be okay. (sighs) I don't want to hear no, Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear that. I, mean, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, just knowing yeah. that's, I've heard, um, I've heard that saying before where, um, like what you saying about you trusting God's heart over his hand. You know what I'm saying? Cause his hand is connected to his heart. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So, sure. so sure. even sure. in the sure. sense of, mm. of even in the waiting, when you don't get it, when you don't get what you thought you wanted, when you don't get, what was on your vision board when you don't get the exact thing you prayed for. Um, it's important to be able to trust God's heart. Yeah. Cause his heart is always in it. Always He's the most it. careful with us. Yeah. You know? So it, that's, I don't know that that's key. That's it might, it might be scripture on um, Proverbs three, five through six, trust in the Lord with all your heart and he would direct your paths. Um, well, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, and He will direct your paths. Mm-hmm. And that directing, sometimes you're like, "Dang, you're directing me," but I was trying to go over yeah. there. Yeah. Um, delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires mm-hmm. of your heart. Some people, I feel like, for me, ain't gonna lie. This was me. I used to hear the scripture, and f- I used to like flip that joint. Yeah. Delight yourself in the Lord. Yeah, I'm um. I'm humble, Lord. You know what I'm saying? I'm being faithful. Yeah. I'm delighting. I'm doing all these things. So give me what I want. Right. And it's like, he would give you the desires of your heart. And what I had to find out was that when you delight in the Lord truly, mm. your desires for yourself become his desires for you. So your heart actually changes. They change. So you don't want, I mean, you may desire things, mm-hmm. but you want, over, ultimately, God becomes the affectionate desire of your heart. So you want him outside of anything else. Mm-hmm. You may have things that you want, plan for, dream for, which is not mm-hmm. wrong to lay that to his feet. But at the, but you have to always kind of like comma your will be Yield, done surrender yeah, yeah. It's like, like those I, things yeah I pray I want comma your desire for yeah. me more than all and if you have that perspective I ain't saying you'll always get what you want mm-hmm. but you'll have all that you need because you'll look you'll, you'll look at life you know what I'm saying you'll do life you'll do life the right way that's so good. and and that's, that's the part of trusting I don't I mean, even like to bring it home like I ain't, I ain't gonna lie after winning the Grammys man it's been producers. People coming up um, to all of us, yo, this world, we got to get, get, we got to get one. People are tapping in with mm-hmm. Lecrae. We got to get ours next year. So they see it as an opportunity mm. to get that thing that is so coveted that God allowed us to touch. Um, it's a desire. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with it, but it's like, I'm, I'm seeing that energy. I'm just like, oh, okay. You want to get here to get that thing. Yeah. It's a formula. It's an input. Mm-hmm. It's back to, it's a, it's a, it feels like a transaction at times. When I wonder if just being faithful, being humble, trusting the Lord and allowing him to do the work and to give those results. I mean, think about like um, the nominations this year for the Stella Award, which is for those who don't know, the Stella Awards is like the gospel industry's uh, award ceremony and nominating people that work in the gospel space. And they have a Christian hip hop and rap category. And I mean, uh, Tadashi's nominated, Lecrae, I believe, Trip Lee, I and think few. 1K Few. Yeah. Um, and and, and, and um, yeah, I feel like even uh, Holy Culture is nominated for yes, Best Radio yo, Show. Right. Shout, out, shout out Holy Culture. Um, and I think those things we celebrate, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But those things are byproducts of faithfulness, not end goals mm-hmm. that you labor for. I mean, it's such a, like, a counterculture view that yeah. it's hard for the world to, 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 grasp. to grasp. It's yeah. like, what? You don't go do it for the Grammy? I mean, look, oh yeah, we want one. Yeah, yeah we put Tasha Cobbs on the record. It helped, but yeah. it's like... That can't be the desire of our heart. Because think about who yeah. that molds us into. Yeah. Because then now we're chas- yeah. we're chasing things of the world. We're chasing trophies. We're chasing all these things that are not eternal. You know what I'm saying? So therefore, then our hearts in the wrong place. Please. So therefore, then our then our motives become like you know distant from what God really wants for us. You know what I'm saying? I think that just always speaks back into. I feel like the conversation always goes back into you saying the, the becoming part, where it's like. It's all leads into who you're becoming. Yeah. If you chase those wrong things and or that's your sole purpose, think about who you're gonna become Shoot. after that. You're gonna want. Then when you lose the, your face on the ground, you know what I'm saying? You gotta pick up your face. You know, but like when you even even with even if you lose, you good. You good. You know what I'm saying? Because because of who you became in the humility, in the waiting, in the faithfulness. 
All right, that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. See y'all next week. <laughs> See y'all. No, but that's um, that's so, so good. good how all those things just tie. It's crazy how even with us talking about it, I was re- like even in this segment seeing stems of humility. And then even like the last conversation, seeing stems of how important it is to wait, like all those things coincide. Yeah. Um, when you are working, you need all three. Yeah. And trusting him with all of it. Um, ultimately, he decides our outcomes, our fates and our desires. Mm-hmm. And every, he shapes everything. Mm-hmm. So uh, ho- hopefully people are blessed by this conversation. I know I was like, no, that was definitely was you know, moved to think about these things myself. So, yeah, it's till next time. This is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sears Channel 140. I'm your host, Ace Harris, here with me at Evans. See y'all next time.